know, I just keep thinking more and more of all of these celebrities that I interviewed over the years. And now I want to talk about Andy Griffith. Yeah. What a nice human being. When he was on Matlock, he was coming up to our radio station back in the mid 70s in Atlanta, Z93 radio. And we had this old sofa and right next to our studio. And he was sitting on the sofa. And when I walked in, he, he must have gotten there like at 5.30 in the morning. So I walked in about 5.45 and I'm thinking, holy cow, there's Andy Griffith, you know, sitting right there on our sofa. And I'm thinking, God, I, he's sitting on a disc jockey sofa. I hope that when he stands up, he's not going to stick to it. <laughs> I'm thinking that. I didn't say it to him. And I said, holy cow, Andy Griffith, where's, where the hell is Opie? And he said, you know, if one more son of a bitch asked me where the hell Opie is, I'm going to kick them in the ass. He said, if you ask me that on the air, I will walk out of your studio. I don't give a damn about Ron Howard or Opie. Those days are over. But he was filming Matlock, not in Atlanta, but it was based on a detective that was based out of Atlanta. But he was really nice after that. We had... We had a great interview, but I'll never forget that when he said, one more person asked me about that damn Opie. Must have happened all the time. Another morning I walk in early and who's sitting on the disc jockey sofa? Also in the mid seventies, believe it or not, Charlie Daniels with his fiddle. I'm thinking, wow, am I dreaming? Because I was a baby DJ. I hadn't met a lot of celebrities at that time. I got out of the Navy in 1972. And then all of a sudden, I'm on a pretty hot morning radio show, and Charlie Daniels is there. And I say, Charlie, how are you? He said, you must be Scott Woodside. And I'm thinking, oh, God, the ultimate compliment. This man knows who I am. And he was smoking a cigar. But back then, you got to remember, or you don't have to remember, but back then, you could smoke in a studio. So he's smoking a, stu- a, a cigar, and we're waiting for my partner. He says, would you like a cigar? I said, no, I'm a cigarette man, but thanks. Uh, great interview, great guy. He was on the show numerous times and just always so complimentary. Just, you know, some people you just never forget because they're so nice. Another guy, Martin Mall, in the mid 70s. And back then he was a brand new upstart comedian on uh, Capricorn Records which was owned and operated and produced by Phil Walden, who discovered the Allman Brothers. Charlie Daniels was on his label and uh, the Atlanta Rhythm Section and on and on and on. But he was the only comedian on the label. I did an interview with him once and the guy started cracking up. Everything I would say, he would start laughing. He says, do you mind if I use this? I said, no, I don't mind and because I'm freaking out. At the time, he was on this really hot TV show also called Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. But he was so cool. Well, right a couple of days later, after doing that interview with Martin Mull, I got fired. And I don't know, I always got fired for doing the right thing. That's just how what happens in broadcasting. You get fired for being a team player. God knows why, why you get fired. Maybe the boss's wife doesn't like your voice. Who knows? But anyway, I got fired and I called one of the guys a few days later and I said, hey, I need to come up to the studio and grab some of my stuff. And he says, hey, by the way, Martin Mall called the other day asking about you. Wanted to know if he could call you. I said, really? Yeah, he said you were really funny and he needed to talk to you. And I said, oh, no. I thought the guy was kidding me, so I didn't give him my phone number. And I never talked to Martin Mall again. You just never know where the crossroads in life are going to take you, do you? You never know which one to choose. So I was just a smart aleck kid in my 20s. And went, oh, okay, he's not that big of a deal. Little did I know, right? And then in D.C., Steve Martin was really hot. He had done a comedy album called We Are Two Wild and Crazy Guys. And he was doing a concert in D.C. And he wanted to be on our show because we were number one in the nation's capital back in the early 80s, late 70s. So he comes on the air and we're talking. I did the whole interview with him and he was laughing and 
just a great interview. I wish I had a recording of it. I, ne- I never recorded it. It was live on the fly. And uh, about, so the interview ended. And about 10 minutes later, his record rep, that was, you know, his handler, called and asked to speak to me. I said, hello, this is Scott. And he said, hey, Scott, this is so-and-so with A&M Records. I think Steve Martin was on A&M Records at the time. I really don't remember. Maybe, maybe it was Capitol. And he said, I just wanted to tell you, Steve Martin thought you were the funniest damn thing he's ever heard in his life. And just between you and me, I've been with him all over the United States doing radio interviews, and you're the only person that's ever made him laugh. He just doesn't laugh at other people's stuff. Ah, I just thought I'd pass it along. But that really made me feel good at the time. Never talked to him again. Never met him. He wouldn't know me from Adam. He would never remember that. But for me, it was a big deal. All right, who's next? Yakov Smirnov. You remember this guy? He he was out during the mid-80s, and he would badmouth the Soviet Union, Russia, Gorbachev, everything. And he was funny. He was a hit across the United States. Well, every time he came in town to do his comedy shtick, he would come on the air, come on our show. He had an open invitation. He was funny as hell. And this was all during where we were, everybody was making fun of the Soviet Union and blah, on and on and on. And uh, had him on one morning, live, and I kept smelling dog crap or, you know, feces. I kept smelling it. And I'm thinking, this guy, uh, this guy stinks. So I just didn't feel good with the interview. I wanted him to finish up and leave. And my partner said, what, what's with you? Because he didn't have that big of a sense of smell, Jim Elliott. And I said, did you smell that guy? So when, when Yakov left, I said, did you smell that guy? He smelled like dog crap. <laughs> so about 15 minutes later, I walked back into the studio where Yakov was and it still smelled like dog crap. And my partner said, if it still smells like dog crap, maybe you ought to check your own shoes. I did. Back then when I lived in DC, I lived in a red brick colonial with a garage that probably wouldn't even house a Mini Cooper. So I parked the cars outside of the house in the driveway. When I got out of the house and before I got into the car, you guessed it, I stepped in a pile of dog crap. I feel so bad. I never saw Yakov Spirinov again. I always said, maybe I need to go to Branson where he's performing and say, hey, Scott Woodside. He would remember, but I don't. He probably couldn't wait to leave wondering why we smelled like dog crap. I don't know. I, I had to share that with you. I've got so many stories. Just, you know, keep coming back for more. And I'll keep trying to come up with more. You take care.